Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about a topic that's been brought up so many times. Whether you should go for an A6400 or A73. These two falls are just nice in the budget of below $1,000. But before we continue, I need to let you guys know that the audio is a little bit different today as I'm shooting on my RX100 Mark V. It will eventually overheat, so I'll switch it out with my A6400 with my uh, Sigma 16mm. So you also can tell the difference between the inbuilt audio quality of the RX105 and the A6400 with the video mic go. So if you are interested in this topic, please stick around as I'll explore more on these two things after my one year experience with a combination of both of them. So currently in the market, these two are quite closely priced. The A6400 being at 998 USD and the A72 at $918, both with kit lenses. Both of the kit lenses share a very similar focal range, so it's quite a good competition and a quite a good comparison between these two. So now let's talk about the first thing which is the crop factor. Now what is a crop factor? Now every camera inside has a sensor, so let me take out and show you guys. There's this sensor inside uh, this A72 and you guys can see it's rather uh, big. Now let me open up my A6400 and show you. Now can you see that the sensor on the A6400 is much smaller? So that's what we are calculating this crop factor against. So basically the sizes of these two sensors have a differentiation of about 1.5. Meaning, let's say if I have a 50mm on this A72, I will have to times 1.5 to get the calculation of this um, focal range. So when you convert over, it will be about uh, 75 mm. And let's say if you are using an aperture of about 1.4, you'll get about 2.2. Now, so how do I usually calculate this? Uh, you can just use a calculator to type it, or there's actually a mm calculator uh, which is right here. Now this helps you to calculate not only the focal range, but the uh, aperture of the lenses that you have. Oh look, it's already overheating. Let's change it up. Okay, so we are now back here. Uh, as you guys can notice the quality difference between the RX100 and my A6400. Uh, this one has a Rode Video Mic Go on top of it, so the audio quality I think is definitely much clearer. So for all comparative purposes, I'll be using my RX100 to represent my A6400. Now if you have other uh, camera lenses, you can also just use the link to multiply and see what kind of focal range you get after uh, doing the crop factor in. So a lot of times people ask me which camera I'll recommend. Uh, for photography, I would still recommend the A7 II. Uh, for video, I recommend the A6400. Now, even though there's a production difference of 5 years, which the A6400 has uh, improved so much, I will still recommend the A7 II. As you guys can see, it has a full frame sensor and a lot of information are captured over here. Now, where the A6400 shines is that the A6400 has very good autofocuses and has a total of 425 phase and contrast detection points. Whereas the A7 II has only about 117 phase detection points. Now just in case you're wondering what is this thing that I'm talking about? These are basically all the points that is featured in the sensor that is able to capture motion more accurately. The more, the better. But for the improvement in technology, why would I recommend the A6400? It's because it has something called the S-Lock. Now if I'm not wrong, the S-Lock stands for Sony Lock. Canon has their own lock, it's called a C-Lock. So Canon Lock and whereas Sony S-Lock is C-Lock. So now this S-Lock mode of recording is basically a very raw recording format which once you record it and you color grade it, you can see a lot of differences within the colors. Whereas comparing with some video which you record, record in just a normal settings, you can actually find a very vast difference between the quality of the colors between the S-Lock footage and just a normal MP4 video that you record. Now let's move on to the screens. Now the A7 II has a flippable screen a tiltable screen, basically it just goes all the way to this way whereas the A6400 just like this RX100 camera has a tiltable screen meaning you can see yourself while you're filming one of the reasons why I like using my A6400 to shoot is that I can see myself just like my RX100 my RX100 is a good companion to, for my A6400 that's why I get them both so now let's talk about another area of consideration which is called the IBIS so IB stands for in-body image stabilization. Now basically it means that once when you record stuff, when you shake a little, it has some compensation to make the footage less shaky. The A6400, although it's a video beast, it doesn't have that. Uh, but a great higher, which is the A6600, has that. But it has a price difference, if I'm not wrong, about $400 to $600. So that's quite a, a considerable differences between the A6400 and the A6600. With that said, um, it helps a lot in as you move and do a lot of vlogging. So let's say if you move here and holding these two hands, it will compensate a lot of the shakiness. Whereas if something uh, like the A6400, you carry, the shakiness is actually uh, very uh, obvious. 
Now, some of you guys might thinking that there are actually some lenses which are actually image stabilized. Now, the lenses stabilization and the body stabilization, there's a slight differences. There are other videos out there which say that the eyebase and the lens stabilization is actually the same. But in my opinion and research, I would say that the lens stabilization are fares poorer than the in-body stabilization. So now let's talk about range of lenses. Now the A7 II is a full frame body, so you can need to take uh, FE lenses. FE is basically the range for full frame lenses, but not to say that you cannot take crop frame, but you have a very strong vignetting and you have to crop further in post in your video programs. Whereas the A6400, they can take uh, E mounts, which is the crop sensor mounts, and the FE mounts. So it has a wider range of lenses which you can adapt. But like I said, you will have to do a multiplication for the focal range and the aperture for the FE lenses and the E lenses once you put it on top of your A6400. So now let's talk about size. What's the main biggest difference between A6400 size and the A7 II? I would say mainly is the viewfinder and the thickness of the body itself. The viewfinder makes a bigger difference as it has this thing which jut out. So I always consider it twice when I bring my A6400 or my A7 II because the A7 II has this uh, viewfinder which is actually quite hard to fit in some, in some of the smaller bags that I have. The A6400 viewfinder is basically just attached at the back so it doesn't have something which jut out. But with that said, um, shooting portraits, uh, the viewfinder definitely has an edge as it is a lot better to shoot portraits this way than to just look at uh, the viewfinder which is an A7 uh, A6400 side uh, this way. Overall, uh, the A6400 has a lighter weight than the A7 II uh, due to the sensor and the technologies that is inside. So if you have somebody who wants to carry something that's lighter, the A6400 might so far be something which you will like. Due to the advances in technology for the Sony system, uh, if you want something which has a longer battery life and you don't have to switch out your battery so many times, I'll suggest something with the Z batteries. Basically the A6600 which is a step above the A6400 has the Z batteries. The A7 III, above, a step above this A7 II, has a Z batteries too. The Z batteries has up to about 3 times the amount of charge that a normal battery has. Uh, so it's definitely much better if you don't plan on switching out the batteries a lot. But either ways, personally, I'm only shooting short content of photo. So the smaller batteries are still okay for me. The only troublesome side, like I mentioned, is that I have to switch it out a couple of times and having a few charge in my bag so that I can switch it out. So in summary, these two cameras are still very worth it. As you guys can see from the quality of my YouTube videos since the past, there's a huge quality differences between the video footages. So overall, these two cameras are still very worth it within this $1,000 price range. For photography, as I said, I will still recommend the A A7 II. Uh, for video, I recommend the A6400. The A6400 has an H as you can record in 4K, whereas the A7 II is not able to do that. All the newer lenses that are coming out are still able to adapt to either of these uh, bodies, so it's definitely a good investment for the future. For $1,000, I would easily say that I've never ever regretted getting this or this and even using it for page shoots right now. I'm very confident of using the A7 II for my food photography and the A6400 for all those highlight videos or other food videos that I need to shoot. So I hope you guys like this video which I cover these two cameras and uh, which I'll recommend. If you guys find it very informative, I'm sure you guys will like other videos that I have. I have a playlist right here which shows all the gears which I've reviewed including the lenses which can either adapt to either of these systems. Either ways, if you guys have either of these two cameras and you would like accessories to help you along, I have also a video right here which features four of my favourite mini tripods to bring around. So now if you guys find this video helpful, you can thank me by hitting the like button or subscribe down below so that I can generate more content for my channel. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my other videos. Oh wow, we are at the end of the video already? That's fast! For all those who would like to know more about photo quality of either of these cameras, you can go over to my Flickr page to see which photos are taken with them. There are also information for camera settings for each of the photos that are taken. If you are interested in knowing more about how crop affects video, there's also a video which I did regarding 4K crop in my A6400. Check them out! See you in my next video!